Dust and dirt that's brought into a vacuum cleaner needs to be filtered out so that only clean air is expelled. A brand new technology has been invented that relies on ultrasonic vibration to do this that advances on current cyclonic filtration methods and might end up in the best upcoming products. Historically, old-fashioned bags relied on mechanical separation, which means they net particles flowing through them. But their resistance to air increases as they pick up dust, which reduces suction, and therefore cleaning performance over time, is easily demonstrated. Inertial separation by cyclones advanced on mechanical separation, and sustained suction as a function of dust loading. The disadvantages of cyclones are twofold. Firstly, they add air resistance, requiring more energy to overcome. Secondly, their separation efficiency varies as a function of air speed entering the cyclone, affecting filtration performance in modern battery-powered machines, where the motor power varies in use to minimise energy wastage. There's therefore been a drive by reputable manufacturers to research ways of achieving cyclonic levels of filtration in a way that's effectively independent of the power mode used on battery-operated devices. One method is to reduce the number of cyclones in use in lower power modes to maintain high volumetric airflow and air speed through them and sustain separation efficiency, and such products are now on the market. Another method was discussed in the prequel video to this one, relying on a rotating perforated disc that allows air to pass through, but prevents particles which carry more momentum. This inertial separation method was shown to achieve cyclonic levels of filtration, but is fraught with a number of difficult engineering challenges associated with the high rotation speed. Those same reputable manufacturers, in January of 2024, patented a new inertial filtration method that achieves at least cyclonic levels of filtration, but without the technical hurdles of the rotating disc approach, and that can be integrated into existing machine designs. The core approach relies on two-stage inertial filtration. Similar to the best products now on the market, dirt is brought into the bin and inertially separated across a mesh with cylindrical holes that are about 1 to 200 micrometers in diameter. This mesh is tough and takes impacts from things like glass, nails and rocks, and is continually aerodynamically washed by fast inrush air and particles, keeping the holes from getting clogged. Premature clogging of the shroud is called blinding which is something you can see in older fashioned cyclonic designs that turn the air on entry to the bin to create a first stage cyclone. The bigger dirt stays in the main bin and the air and particles no larger than the hole size pass through into the D-shaped duct which holds the new filter. This filter is simply another mesh but with a few key differences. It's about 80 micrometers thick and has similar uniform and symmetric pores across it. Each entry hole is larger at about 300 micrometers, but this reduces in an annular convex shape with constant radius to a diameter of about 120 micrometers. A mesh like this needs to be electroformed from nickel sulfate. This mesh is sealed onto the walls of the D-shaped column with flexible seals because it's made to vibrate at extremely high frequencies using an ultrasonic oscillator. This is made using a Langevin transducer, driving an amplifier that connects to the mesh. A Langevin transducer is a piezoelectric element mechanically pre-stressed between masses that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy and can generate very high frequency oscillations that can then be amplified. The mesh is made to oscillate at frequencies ranging from 20 to 40,000 times a second, which is outside the range of human hearing and so won't be audible, with an amplitude of about 150 micrometers, which is at least equal to the smaller pore size of the mesh. The curved edges of the annular convex shaped pores bash back almost all approaching microscopic particles, about one micrometer or greater in size, in the airflow as they attempt to pass through, which is the typical cut point size of the best vacuum cleaner cyclones. This ultrafine dust gravitationally sediments and settles at the bottom of the D-shaped column and is emptied when the bin flap opens. All microscopic filtration can now be done in the main bin without later need for cyclones or needing space for the big bulky cyclone pack, giving a physically much smaller and lighter product with the same bin capacity, and using fewer materials. While this invention provides the desired ability to filter microscopic dust independently of the power mode, and therefore air and particle velocities, the faster the ultrasonic mesh oscillates, the more energy is consumed from the battery. So, optimising the vibration frequency to match the maximum approaching particle velocity is needed. The time it takes for the smaller mesh pore diameter to move fully out of the way of where it was, and back, 
has to be shorter than the time it takes for a particle to pass through the mesh thickness. The time it takes for the particle to pass through the mesh is easily calculated and depends on its velocity. Similarly, you can calculate the time it takes for the mesh to complete an oscillation cycle, which is its period, or the reciprocal of the oscillation frequency. If you calculate the ratio of these two times, then values greater than 1 will mean the particles can't traverse the filter before being intercepted by the curved edge of the convex mesh pore wall. You can express this ratio as a function of the oscillation frequency and the dust particle velocity from the earlier equations. This expression shows that you can proportionally increase oscillation frequency in response to increasing maximum particle velocity at greater motor powers to reduce the energy consumption. Research has found that in low operating power modes, frequencies of 20 kHz are optimal, which increases to 35 to 40 kHz for boosted modes with greater air and particle velocities through the mesh. Oscillation frequencies greater than this apparently give diminishing returns. The much cleaner air then heads to the pre-motor and HEPA filters, which handle submicroscopic dust in the usual way. Research has shown this method of filtration is also very energetically efficient. It has a mostly simple and linear air path, with no energy lost in turning to create cyclones. The vibrating mesh also causes considerably less air resistance and pressure loss compared to cyclones. These improvements help to reduce power consumption without affecting cleaning performance. Research is still likely ongoing, and there are a number of other configurations and areas being researched to improve filtration efficiency even further, including having a separate chamber to hold the mesh at an angle more parallel to the airflow, since this was found to improve separation efficiency. Another is to have multiple layers of oscillating meshes, each with ever-decreasing pore size and with individually tuned oscillation amplitudes. Other approaches may incorporate the ultrasonic mesh into alternative bin designs that allow transient high-velocity sheet jets across the primary mesh that blast away accumulated dust and stop blinding, and reverse pressure sneezing at over 450 miles an hour to self-unclog. The research in this area is very interesting and is driven by the desire to achieve more using less, as only the best manufacturers aspire to. Bigger and more power guzzling isn't always better anymore and is often a lazy cop-out once you reach a reasonable level. If you like this kind of technological improvement, make sure you only support those companies aspiring to achieve it, and shun any that lazily dupe the technology of others at your expense. I hope you enjoyed the video.